All right, hey there, fellas. Here's what we have in store for you today. I've actually been reading through your comments recently, your suggestions, and those suggestions never cease to amaze me. We have a bunch of nutty ideas coming in all the time. They're pretty interesting, of course, and some of them we definitely do. Crazy stuff. It would take quite a while to get some of them to happen. They are very much doable, of course, but I reckon that they would be just too time-consuming. We might get to them in the summer. As you might imagine, it's a lot more fun working on such projects during the summer, thanks to the warm weather and not having to fire up any heaters. As for today, we were actually joking about this a while back. Anyway, the point of today's project is to figure out what'll happen if you were to weld the drive shaft straight to the crank, without a gearbox in between or anything like that, and find out what it's like if you were to drive around in a car like that. We found ourselves this here lovely thing, which is an old battle-scarred Lada. The motor works okay, as does the gearbox, well, for the time being anyway, like for the next hour maybe. <laughs> After that it's not going to be working. Okay, so now I take the car apart, remove the gearbox. I do want to leave the clutch in there, so I'll be dismantling the box, cutting off the bell housing where the clutch is located, and welding the input shaft straight to the drive shaft. I want to keep the clutch so that I can get the car going. I mean, we won't have any gears to shift. I want to be able to press the clutch. Start the car and go for a drive. Enough talk, let's do this. Welding the prop shaft to the motor and driving without a gearbox. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, looks like I'm done welding. Things are looking pretty good. Now we just have to install everything into the car and keep on welding. We have to increase the prop shaft's length, since we have shortened the gearbox a bit. In any case, we will have to increase the length of the drive shaft. Here's the situation with the gearbox. You might be wondering why I welded on a flange. That's so I can bolt on a rubber coupling, which used to be installed at the back of the gearbox anyway. But since it has been shortened considerably, we are left with just the bell housing and an input shaft. Anyway, this was done in order to be able to run a clutch. We want to be able to start the car without it taking off straight away. We are running a direct drive straight from the motor, with torque being transferred right to the drive shaft. Right, we'll see where this goes. Okay, let's keep on hammering.
Here's what we're looking at. It's all quite simple. I obviously wasn't going to weld the prop shaft straight to the crank or whatever. I did mention that I want to keep the clutch in place. Here's how we set everything up. We are still using the input shaft. All we have to do is take everything apart, which wasn't hard, cut a chunk from the gearbox. We obviously had to dismantle the rear section. At first I wanted to skip that part, but later I figured that that was a bad idea. Anyway, we cut a piece off, which enabled us to take everything apart beautifully. All that's left is the bell housing and a small piece of the casing, which is where we installed the bearing. Here we have a flange, together with this here rubber coupling. We had to keep the slip joint in place, since the rear axle does move up and down, changing the length of the drive shaft. And here we have a piece of pipe, which we welded in. Here we have the support bearings, so nothing much has changed over here. I should say that after we welded everything together, a funny thought occurred to us. We were like, what if after all we've done, the car is just going to drive backwards? We decided to double check. Hey, Pavel, can you turn the engine over with that handle? Just to make sure that we're good. All right, so the wheel is indeed rotating in the right direction. But there's still no guarantee. Let me just hold on to this wheel, and we keep on cranking the motor. All right, everything seems to be in order. We look okay. I reckon the car will actually move forward instead of in reverse. Okay, fellas, things are looking pretty good. So we'll be going to one of two test tracks in an attempt to have some fun in this direct drive car. Let's do this. Okay, fellas, as you can see, we've made it to the test track and we've already jacked up the car. We have a slight situation here. The boys weren't able to get the camera out in time. And I was just itching to find out what it's like driving this car with its direct drive. So I decided to have a go. But I wasn't able to go far. Due to a slight mishap. The weathered out rubber coupling let go. It seemed to be functional, but under load it fell apart. No need to worry though. I'll just head back to the garage, chop off this piece. Since I do remember the length we need, then I weld on a new pipe, make my way back here, install the thing, and go for a drive. Right, guys, here's what we're looking at. Yesterday I fabricated a new prop shaft extension. And I bought a new coupling. I mean, literally a new one, which hasn't been used before. That other one crapped out on us yesterday. But hopefully this one's gonna hold up okay. Time to throw this on and go for a drive. All right, fellas, we are looking good. Here's what I want to do. I'll get the car up on this here jack, fire it up. We are running a direct drive, which transfers torque straight to the prop shaft. I don't know, I guess I engage the choke, remove the jack from underneath the car, and see whether it drives or not. This should probably work given a no-load situation. It'll probably stall anyway, but let's have a look. We are ready to go. Time to start this thing up. Okay, the engine is running, looking good. Awesome. It should probably move, I guess. We're aiming at that pile of snow. Yeah, that should do it. Let's go. Come on now. Oh, I didn't make it. Let's give it another try. Now we fire it up. It is running. Great. All right, here we go again. Let's do this. It's moving, look at that. Oh, it didn't make it this time either. So here's the situation. Without somebody sitting behind the wheel and giving this thing a bit of persuasion, this car ain't going anywhere. We'll lift the car a third time, then I get behind the wheel, rev it out a bit, or maybe not even a bit, I'm not sure yet. Anyway, we then yank the jack from underneath the car and try getting it to move. Okay, let her rip. It fell apart again, for crying out loud. Damn it. What happened? Let's have a look and see what's up. 
Oh my god. Oh my... Looks like we're done here. We are finished. So here's what we wound up with, fellas. We didn't think this one through. These rubber couplings just aren't up to the task. This one was brand spanking new. We just bought it recently. You saw for yourselves, it fell apart almost right away. And we're looking at a bent extension. Again. In any case, fellas, this was all in good fun. We broke something yet again. I reckon this calls for connecting the motor to the prop shaft without any bearings, couplings or anything else in between. That's definitely something for another day, so if you like this video, be sure to give us a bunch of thumbs up. Then I'm gonna be making a long prop shaft, and I might even toss the clutch out as well. Or maybe I shouldn't? I don't know, we'll figure it out. Anyway, show us some love, and we'll try fabricating a super long drive shaft to install into this here car. This one actually damaged the transmission tunnel when it blew up, and it even took a fuel hose with it. What a nightmare. Anyway, that's not the point. We did see some sort of result. And that concludes this video. Don't forget to tune in, subscribe, leave some comments and suggestions. Later, fellas!